Good afternoon, good evening participants. Um, welcome to the second module of our course on harnessing the digital potential to accelerate our great entrepreneurship and the growth of youth businesses. Module two will focus on designing and piloting a successful ICT for agriculture program. And, uh, in this presentation, we'll give you an overview of the second module, which deals with the main content in the principles of digital development. And in order to get along with these nine principles, five case studies have been used um, in, that have been proposed before. So to fully enjoy this course and learn more, you must read the complete course material and that accompanies the module narrative. These resources can be downloaded from the platform. And that's the it platform on which we are um, having this, um, this course. So um, like I said, Module two will focus on principles for digital development and the use of open standards, open data, open source, and open innovation. It will also address issues of privacy and security. So what are these principles for digital development? We'll start with the first one, which is um, designing with the user. I'll take time to explain those. Um, understanding the ecosystem. Maybe let me explain them as I go through them. Designing with the users. This is just about buying and creating an understanding of um, the project or the concept to the user so that they can accept it and they can embrace it, which is very important because otherwise, if they don't do that, then it, um, it compromises on the success of the project. And then understanding the existing ecosystem. This is extremely critical because you don't want to reinvent the wheel you don't want to duplicate things you don't want to misinterpret policies and um, existing ways of doing things within that ecosystem of digital so when you once you understand what people have done before and uh, the lessons learned then it becomes easy for you to get in and understand how the entire ecosystem works and how each and each of these pieces, pieces relate to each other. And then uh, design for scale. We always look at um, uh, digital development and most times people complain that these things end in startup and you know uh, small projects and usually they're not scaled up or they don't go into the market. So one of the principles to consider uh, for this digital development is to make sure as you start to design, you have to make sure that your end goal is for, for the scalability, like it has to go beyond the, the startup phase and be marketable. And then the fourth is building for sustainability. I think this is no brainer because oftentimes when we have these projects, um, we, 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 they run for as long as we have funding for them. And when that funding gets finished or when a, a donor pulls out, that's it. Yet, it's very important that uh, they continue to exist even beyond uh, the planned life cycle of the project. So you have to start building for this sustainability in a way that you incorporate ways in which the project can be sustainable beyond the time planned for it. Okay, like uh, some business aspects to it. And then when you have a good buy-in from the users, then they're the ones who will uh, drive the sustainability agenda. Of course, data driven, uh, a lot of information is, um, a lot of decisions are dependent on data. So for whatever uh, digital project you're doing, you have to have that concept of data at the back of your mind, because then that informs a lot of policies and then um, a lot of decision making. And then the other principles, the use of standards, open data, open source, and open innovation. I think that is very um, obvious that uh, you have to incorporate uh, a lot of these for reasons that also help you, but also help others who are coming into that same um, space. And then should be reusable and should be something that can be improved. It's, for instance, how you do your thesis. At your, for your graduate studies or your degree. And at the end of it, you're putting recommendations. So it's the same thing here for 
an ICT for AG project, someone should be able to borrow best practices from it, but also a next innovator should be able to improve on what you've already done. So for instance, if your project was targeting, let's say market information, you know, you could build the platform, but there could be another innovator who could uh, build another application that collects all this information that you need and curates it in a way that is shareable. So you should be able to leave that room for reuse and improvement. And then of course, address the issues of privacy and security. Oftentimes, uh, when we look at digital, we look at the issue of data being compromised. So for instance, if you're collecting information about farmers, you're collecting their bio information, maybe you're collecting their financial information, you have to look at the issue of protecting them and also uh, the issue of their privacy, such that you don't sell that information without their consent. And then you don't um, expose them to things that can compromise um, their security and privacy. And then the most important be collaborative because um, no, no man can operate as an island. You need different people to drive these development processes and help you succeed in your project. So you have to be able to cooperate, cooperate with marketers, with financial people, with auditors, with journalists, you know, with development partners, with private sector, so that you can have one strong um, process. So these principles for development, <clears throat> when we look at uh, integration into the project life cycle, there are three uh, processes here, analyze and plan, design and evolve, deploy and implement, and these are cross-cutting in monitoring and evaluation. So bringing in monitoring and evaluation at all these phases of the project life cycle provides you with useful information on how users, stakeholders are affected by the tool you're developing or you've developed, if it's being used and if it has led to your desired outcomes. So if you analyze and plan and involve users there, and as you design and develop, you involve users, as you deploy and implement, users are involved, you're monitoring and evaluating and seeing if you're achieving your end result or your end goal. And then when you look at still on the principles for digital development and the integration into the project life cycle, uh, they, they, there are some guidelines to follow. And some of them are beginning with a shared understanding of the initiative's purpose. So why are you developing this, um, this solution or this uh, digital application? Why, what's, what's, what's the drive? and then uh, use a participatory process to identify performance indicators, such as usage and adoption. So what are some of these participatory processes? You have to understand them. You know, for those of you who have done research, look at focus discussion groups, the observation, the interviews, you know, and even just uh, testing some systems. So when people participate, then the ownership is easier. They feel that they are part of it and that helps you to identify those performance indicators, like how is the usage, how is the adoption? Is it what I want to achieve? And then of course, sharing findings and data with users and the larger digital development community. Oftentimes people who do a lot of this development work are accused of going to the field, collecting data, testing some applications and then disappearing it's important as a best practice that whatever findings you get, you share them with the people that you involved at the beginning. That way, like I say, you increase ownership and adoption and acceptance of the application and the eventual use of it. And then of course, modify the initiative based on evidence. So if it's participatory, if you've shared findings and you've gotten feedback, then you continuously adjust based on the evidence that you pick from the people who are participating. So this is what this diagram literally uh, explains, you know, all this comes down to functional testing and, you know, analysis of results to be achieved. And like I said previously, incorpor incorporating M and E across every phase of the project life cycle provides you with useful information on how users and stakeholders are affected by the tool. And if it's being used, 
or if it has led to your desired outcome. So based on the information that you get, you can identify opportunities to improve the tool or increase impact. And in the previous stages, you were testing to determine if the tool worked. Now you are assessing whether it helps to achieve pragmatic outcomes. So that's pretty much what this is about. So we said we'll do some case studies um, in this module. And the first case study is this farm.inc. And it's, um, we're looking at one of the principles, the principles the imp from the other principles that we share, the one they implemented is building for sustainability. In other words, be data driven. Those were the, uh, the principles, the two, build for sustainability, but be guided by data. So they have this app, mobile application, as you can see in the diagram on your left. And this farm.inc is a social enterprise whose mission is to improve the profitability of small scale farmers in East Africa and beyond. They do this by developing innovative technology solutions to increase market access, improve transparency, and encourage responsible business practices. So this uh, mainly was developed to actually educate farmers on fall armyworm. I'm sure very many of you are very conversant with that. So I would encourage that we check out this application and try to interface with it if we can and then see how the farmers interacted with the system and see how these two, how these two principles were applied, building for sustainability and data, being data-driven. Then the, case, the, the, the second case study, the principles that were implemented are understanding the existing ecosystem, being data-driven and then using all the open standards, data, open source, open innovation. And then the third one was reuse and um, should be reusable and should be improved. And then of course, be collaborative. So this was really ICRISAT. And this case study describes the digital for agriculture work conducted by the International Crop Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics, which is ICRISAT. Each case study examines different adoption approaches and how digital tools impacted organizational culture, operations, and programs. So again, if you take time and look at this diagram and study how the sowing help up helps farmers increase yield, I think it will be of um, value, but also I encourage that you go to check out also ICRISAT as you do your course on the, on the platform check out and see um, how they have used these principles to achieve um, in, this, in one of these uh, case studies that we've just shared. And then the third case study um, is with SEAT, which is a center for tropical agriculture. And the principle they implemented was be data-driven. If you've noticed all the three uh, case studies we've shared, data-driven has been a constant. So with SEAT, um, it describes the digital for agriculture work. Uh, in 2018, SEAT began exploring a new approach to using mega data tools to analyze information and help farmers make better on-farm decisions that lead to improved agricultural outcomes. So please, again, yeah, depending on what phone or what gadget you use, Please download that app, AgroTutor, and see how SEAT um, implemented this principle on data being data driven. And then the fourth is Farm Radio. They used the principle of understanding the existing ecosystem, uh, being reusable, and being able to improve it, and then being collaborative. And this case study describes the uh, Farm Radio International work that works with more than 500 radio partners in 38 African countries to address poverty and food security with a goal uh, to help its broadcasting partners produce content that serves the interest of small scale farmers and helps improve food security. It develops radio scripts, packages, and a weekly electronic news service. And I think this is very important because um, radio is one of those tools that have been very powerful in disseminating agricultural information across Africa. 
So what Farm Radio does, it collaborates with uh, local partners, especially community radio service providers, and trains them on how to develop these radio scripts, on how to do news packages, and all these electronic news services, but specific to agriculture and targeting smallholder farmers. So again, I employ each one of you to go read more about Farm Radio International and see some of the things they are doing and how they're imp implementing the principles that I mentioned, understanding the ecosystem, reusing and improving, and then being collaborative. And then the fifth case study, they used again understanding the ecosystem, being data driven. We see data again, open, using the open standards, and then being collaborative. And this is Feed the Future. So it describes their work, uh, the Feed the Future work uh, in Senegal. It's a US agency. And through its uh, project, one of its projects, it has relied on the self organizational capacity capacity of local producers and small and medium-sized enterprises. I think that's where the success of the project is, relying on the capacity of local producers. That, that is really the principle of understanding the existing eco system, okay? For monitoring the activities. Feed the Future's objective has been to lay the foundation for a new ecosystem where a producer organization control organizations control their data and are able to tear their own growth. And I think that's really very important because it also builds the spirit of collaboration and it leaves the um, issue of the development to the local organizations, local SMEs and the local producers. So they just build the capacity and then let the others manage it themselves because they understand their environment, they understand their ecosystems. So again, please go read more about this um, organization. So uh, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for listening in. We look forward to hearing about your experience in digital agriculture through the online forum. Please feel free to ask questions about this presentation or documentation provided. We are here to help you deepen your understanding and we'll do everything in our power to make sure you pass the course. Do not forget to put your comments, ask questions, respond to each other on the platform and we'll be there to support each of those conversations. Thank you very much.